Action. A cedar tree on a bluff overlooking a large bay. A whale jumps. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about CEDAR, an open source policy language in SDK. And I am here with Mike Hicks, Senior Principal Applied Scientist with Amazon Web Services. Hey, Mike. Hey, how are you? I'm well. Awesome. I like your t-shirt, by the way. Thank you. That's really awesome. I think the cedar is one of my favorite trees, so I really like the name that you gave the programming language. You're going to give us a little demo of it, aren't you? And yes, I And then we're going to chit-chat. Sounds good. All right. All right. So. Uh, Cedar is a language for helping you, the application writer, control access to your resources, basically to write a permission system for your application. Uh, what you might do normally is to write a bunch of code to implement your permission system, but instead with Cedar, you can write Cedar policies and you can delegate access requests to the Cedar authorization engine. Uh, and there's a bunch of reasons why you might want to do that. First of all, the authorization engine is implemented using automated reasoning and intensive testing to make sure that it's correct. Cedar policies are ergonomic, easy to read and write. The language is designed to have deterministic low latencies. And your policy set is analyzable. And we provide tools to help you find bugs. Uh, and of course, because Cedar is really cool. Totally. So I'm going to show you this demo of using Cedar to handle the permissions of Tiny To Do, uh, a task list manager. So this is what Tiny To Do looks like. It's a little uh, server written in Rust, and uh, here you can see that Cedar's authorization engine is handling when clients send their commands in, figuring out whether those commands are allowed or not. And it's going to look at the Cedar policies to make that determination. If everything's good, the command goes ahead. If not, it's going to return back off denied. And so, all the so this is, is an arc this is an application written in Rust. It's written in Rust, and so it can can. You work across any programming language? We have bindings for Java as well. Um, and we would love community contributions uh, before we get to it ourselves to make bindings for other languages. OK. So let me show you um, what this looks like. Here are the Cedar policies for this application. Um, so those are stated up front. You can state them up front. You can design them to be created on the fly if you like. But in this case, yes, all the policies are in a separate file stated up front. What's the best practice here that you're looking for? There's no best practice. Uh, I, I personally like stating them up front because right. I like to be able to look at them once and for all and know what okay. they all mean. Okay. Uh, but you, you could create them on the fly. Okay, great. So uh, the idea with uh, Tiny To Do is to create task lists and update them, but to share them with other users and let them do the same. Uh, let me just show you what that looks like when we actually run it. So I'm going to um, start up the, the client here, uh, written in Python, and I'm going to fire up the server. There's a few logging messages that show that the server got started. And I'm going to assume the role of the, the user, Andrew. And Andrew's going to try to create a list. So the logging messages I'm showing here are those calls to the Cedar engine that we just saw in the diagram. And the call is saying, hey, Andrew is asking to perform this action create list for Tiny To Do. And the Cedar authorization engine is saying, yep, that's, that's fine, because Policy Zero said it was OK. What's that? Well, that's this policy that we were just looking at. And this policy says that any principal is allowed to perform either of these two actions for the application Tiny To Do. And the action we just saw was the create list action. So this request was authorized by this policy. It's very simple, isn't it? Very straightforward. It's designed so that if you look at these policies, they're easy to understand and read, even if you've never seen the language before. So let's say now that Andrew wants to add a task uh, to his list. So he does that, and the request goes over to Cedar. There's a user, Andrew, wants to create task. And this time, the resource is the list, list zero that he just created. And that's allowed because of policy one. So let's look at policy one. It says, any principal can perform any action on a resource as long as they're the owner. And so Andrew was the owner of the list. He just created it. And so he was allowed to perform that action. Now let's suppose that uh, you're a different user, Kesha. And Kesha now tries to have a look at Andrew's list. Uh, that request is going to be denied. Andrew, uh, Kesha called get list here on list zero. And we see that the answer is deny with no reasons given. Why is that? It's because Cedar is a default deny language. Unless one of these four policies authorizes access, then Kesha is not allowed to see the list. Why would you do that? Why would you make it a fault deny language? 
because it's safety by default. Okay. Make sure right. that you only give access if you really intend to. Okay. So um, the other two policies that I'm showing here are that we can share lists with other users. For example, I can look at a list if I'm a member of the readers group or the editors group for the list. And here I can update the list uh, if I'm a member of the editors group. So if I was Andrew, uh, once again, and I did share a list with Kesha, but only read only, Then when I change to be user uh, Kesha and call get list again, this time I'll allow it to. So it's printing out the contents of the list, and you can see that this was authorized by policy two. Okay. So um, this is basically Cedar in a nutshell. There's right. other uh, things that, oh my gosh, that Cedar uh, provides. One of them is a um, schema that allows you to describe the shape of the data in your application, as well as the particular actions. We just saw create list, get list. Uh, this, is, this file is describing those. We can make sure that our policies uh, are correct. So if I try to make a GT list action, it fails because you didn't tell me about that action inside of the schema. If I had my policy this way and sent a request off, this policy obviously wouldn't work if the, the action didn't match. Right. Uh, and there are other mistakes that it can check for. For example, if I misspell uh, an attribute, it's going to complain about that. If I do a, a command like this, where I try to treat a group as if it's a, uh, a number, that's not going to work either. So this is a way that we can analyze the contents of the language and make sure that you don't make policy mistakes. Who wrote the language? So uh, Cedar was conceived uh, just over a year ago. We started to work on it, uh, actually maybe more like a year and a half ago. Um, uh, a couple of uh, senior folks at AWS recognized that customers need a way to manage their own resources, not just AWS resources, but resources like task lists in their application, and they brought uh, to bear ideas from the identity and access management language to inform their thinking about what this new language could look like. It also, I am policies also have principal action resource and conditions, but it's a language that's evolved over 10 years. It's very specific to its use case. And so they felt like a new language was needed um, uh, to meet customer needs. What customer needs does it help meet then? Cedar is uh, customizable. So all of the actions you can see here that we defined, we made those up for our particular application and our use case. Uh, you are able to for your needs for your application, whether it's a, a compute cluster or a user application or um, you know whatever it might be, be able to define policies and entities um, as suit your your data model. Okay. Um, why did you open source it? Great question. So Cedar started its life as the policy language for Amazon Verified Permissions. It's a service that's now in uh, private preview. And Amazon Verified Permissions takes what we just saw and makes a cloud service out of it. So your application, instead of linking the, uh, the authorization engine in your Rust code, instead calls out to a cloud service, which then runs the Cedar authorization engine on policies that are stored in that service. So this is great when you have lots of applications that want to share the same policies, you want to co-locate all of your logging and auditing and so forth inside that cloud service. What we realized was not everybody can use a cloud service. Some applications really want that authorization engine local to their application, so they don't have to pay that round trip. Uh, uh, and they have use cases that are maybe lighter weight or that they want to customize, for example, for different data models. And so we felt like, well, open sourcing it is going to make those customer applications possible, and it's going to allow us to take in community contributions and ideas to continue to make the language better. Because you couldn't do that before, and so those community contributions will be core to what you're building here, and you mentioned that kind of in perspective with having bindings for multiple different programming languages. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. There's there's a, a long list of things that we think that we need for Cedar, but we know that the moment, in fact, open sourcing it only yesterday, we've already gotten uh, a bunch of great feedback. We've gotten some pull requests uh, fixing our documentation. Uh, we know that soon customers are going to be telling us things um, that they want in the language and providing contributions that we didn't even think of. So what types of contributions would be helpful? I can think of several. So one you mentioned already, these extra language bindings, right. being able to call it from Go or from Python, I think would be right. a, a great help. 
another thing that would be great would be to implement Cedar inside of a sidecar. Um, that's another way that you can make it accessible for many programming languages and systems. Being able to delegate off to a server that's running uh, adjacent to, say, your Kubernetes cluster to do your authorization that way. Uh, shouldn't be hard to build, but it's something we could use. A way of uh, interfacing with Cedar, the way it was evaluating the policies, it needed to, as you can um, see in the policies that we were looking at, it's looking at application data, in this case, task lists. There's a particular format we expect for that data. Being able to interface to existing data stores, backend databases, having uh, integrations for that, I think would also be something we could really use. And so what have been the initial pull requests? Uh, so far, they have uh, people have observed uh, mistakes in URLs and uh, corrections to documentation where we weren't as careful as we should have been. All helpful. Uh, actually, right. one person uh, made a suggestion for a VS Code plugin, which I, I, I've been using. This is a one that we haven't open sourced yet, so that was great to hear. Okay, great. What's the interest in policy languages these days? What is it that's driving this interest, do you think? I think there's a couple answers for that. One is, when people start to build permission systems in their applications, they find very quickly that as the application evolves, that permission system gets unwieldy and hard to maintain. By having a policy language that's factored out off to the side, it's easier to figure out what your policies really mean because they're not all entangled with your application code. And because that language was designed for policies, it's more likely that it's going to capture the evolution of your use case moving forward. Interesting discussion that could be had about all the different ways that this might be applied. What are some of your what are some, where do your thoughts go when you think about the future of Cedar and its evolution? So the most exciting thing about Cedar I see coming in the future is the ability to analyze policies to help users know that the policies that they wrote uh, are the ones they really intended. Cedar's design as a very simple language, one that hopefully is, you can see is quite understandable, is amenable to using a technique called automated reasoning that allows you to reason about the permissions that your policies are really uh, authorizing. As your policies change over time, having automated reasoning to tell you, hey, do you realize that you just put in a policy that made another policy uh, null and void? You probably didn't mean to do that. Do you realize that this refactoring that you're trying to do actually provides more permissions rather than only the same ones? By using these analysis tools, we're able to help customers manage their policies and make sure their security posture is where they need it to be. And I think there's a lot of potential in Cedar for going that direction. I guess the last question that I have is like, there's more people who are needing to learn this, isn't there? Especially as security and S-bombs become much more important to be considering. I was just having a discussion with that about the rise of kind of people who are in product security roles, right? Or in risk officers. So this seems to be a, uh, a aspect of that evolution. You can use Cedar in many situations, including, I think, the one that you were just describing, using it to describe security postures for organizations, being able to describe uh, when you're going to be amenable to taking in a particular software package or uh, using a particular system. Uh, our hope is that these policies have lots of use cases, and the ones you described are, are, are certainly in bounds. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.